Martin, tell me a little bit about your background and uh, where you grew up. Well, I grew up in, uh, well, it wasn't really a remarkable sort of background. I grew up in a place called Chichester on the south coast of England. Yeah. Um, my dad was a cop, really, and that's mm -hmm. how I kind of got interested in policing, I guess. I never had any plans to become an academic or, or, or anything like that. But I guess, I mean, when you grow up in a police family, it's slightly different yeah. to the experiences yeah. other people have. Yeah. There are differences, and you can't always put your finger on it, but you know something slightly different. Yes. Yeah. Um, so never tempted to join the police then? Um, my dad was really against me joining <laughs> the police. Um, I'm always one of those people who ask, well, why is it being done like that? Yeah. And that doesn't always work in, a, in an organisation like so, the police. So dad set your interest uh, in train. You watched him going back and forth to work and there's sort of something flickering uh, underneath the skin for a long time then. Yeah, I think, I, I think so. And you, you realise when you're sort of around, you realise two things I think when yeah, you're around yeah. cops a lot, is one that they're ordinary people but they sometimes have to do extraordinary things. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's really, yeah. really important, yeah. you know, and, and, and throughout the work that I've done I've always tried to um, try and understand what the police do, yeah. how they yeah. do it, with a degree of respect for, for what it is that they're trying to do. I might not always agree, yes. yeah. but actually it comes from a point of, you know, some of this is really hard, I wouldn't yeah. like to do it. Yeah. Uh, and, and you see that and I think sort of growing up in a police family, you also saw mm. what people bring home mm. and the consequences mm. yes. from yeah. it, and that can be quite hard. And you realise that, you know, you are out there on the streets, often on your own, mm. making life mm. and death decisions sometimes. Um, but it doesn't stop once you take the uniform off. Yeah. Um, and sort of, I think, kind of appreciating that was, was quite important. Did that have an impact on you going? I'd like to talk about school next. I <laughs> just wonder how that sort of um, affected you w within school. And w w were you the, the only child of a police officer within the school? Um, in my secondary school, yeah. I was. Yeah. Um, well, no, actually, there was one or two of us, yeah. um, but we weren't particularly close. Uh -huh. kind of. There wasn't yeah. a group of us. But yeah, you do you, you do know um, that. Um, you're slightly different, and you kind of got the stuff about, mm -hmm. you know, don't talk to him, his dad's a cop, yeah, kind yeah. of thing, it'll get back, and, yeah. you know, there was there was something slightly different. I didn't mind that. No, no. I didn't mind that, but you know that there's something, there's something there. Um, but you, you kind of find your own way, yeah. and, you know, I wasn't, I was never the best student at school, I was yeah. kind of, I prefer to play rugby and football. Kind yeah, kind I was, was going to ask yeah, you about yeah. your interest in school, so yeah. if, if we start with the, the, the social side of it then, the rugby, football. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, you know, that, that's what I did. Uh, when I was really young, I had, I can always remember being told I had a very, very advanced reading age, mm -hmm. but I just didn't kind of get on with school. Yeah. I yeah. think there was a particular style of learning there and a particular way of approaching this. It just wasn't me. Yeah. Um, but I loved rugby. I played mm -hmm. rugby and football for the county, and that's kind of what mm -hmm. I what I did. Yeah. And, and I was quite happy doing that. Um, and I was all right at school, mm -hmm. but just kind of sailed through. Yeah. And any, any subject that caught your attention, interested you, any um, teachers that inspired you? Yeah, I mean, I, I think actually I was probably more engaged by good teachers yeah. than the, I liked history, yeah. and I quite liked English. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't particularly good at anything else kind of <laughs> yeah, thing yeah. but actually when you when you get someone who's good at their job so if you get a really great yeah. teacher and a really you know someone who's enthused and committed to their subject and they can engage you I think and make you interested in things and, and that's something I think that I've always carried through in life I can be interested in lots of different things mm -hmm. what I like is people who are committed to what they do and are really good at yeah. what they do and I find those kind of people really interesting and they're the kind of people I like working with was there one individual in school that...? Um, yeah, uh, there was a history teacher yeah. called um, Mr Lancaster. Yeah. Um, good name for a history teacher. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, he, he, but he was great. Yeah. He was a really good teacher and he was everything you want in an educator. He never had mm -hmm. to shout, yeah. he yeah. never had to... Bolt. He just made things engaging and interesting. Um, and he stood out for me, really. Mm -hmm. So A-levels then, what, what was your, your choices? A-levels were... Uh, A -levels were um, there was stuff going on at home yeah. in, in the background, so A levels weren't a great yeah. time. Yeah. Um, but actually, I think one of the things for me is I've always been one of those people. You learn more from your failures mm -hmm. than you do yeah. from your successes. Yeah. I think, and A levels was a difficult time yeah. for me, um, and I didn't do very well. Mm -hmm. And I had to make a decision at that point, which mm -hmm. is, 
you know, do you go back and do it again and do better, which is what I decided to do, or do you yeah. just kind of coast? And I think that was an important moment yeah. for me, yeah. which is no one else is going to do this for you. Mm -hmm. um, so that's when I think I kind of took a bit more of a grip. Um, did well enough to get into university, didn't yeah. do outstandingly at my A-levels. Mm -hmm. um, and again, kind of did okay for the first bit of university. Got to the third year, there was a module on criminology yeah. um, with um, a lady, a professor called Frances Hydenson mm -hmm. at Goldsmiths, and she was ace. Yeah. She was great, and that's where, if you like, the the switch did, flicked on there. Did, did the, the two worlds collided yeah, and then? Came and together, the, yeah. and I thought, actually, I'm really interested. I can really do this, yeah. um, and, and, and did it. And I think it was. The other thing that happens around that point is your style of learning yeah. changes. So it becomes, I was never one for sort of details and learning mm -hmm. stuff because mm -hmm. you've got to learn it. Yeah. But as soon as it became about my project yeah. and stuff that yeah. I was interested in, that really made a difference. Can you remember what the, the project was, the dissertation? Um, I did something on youth crime and yeah. motivations mm -hmm. for, for youth crime. Uh, and um, at the time, there was a lot going around about yeah. rational opportunities and yeah. stuff. And I, I went and interviewed some kids engaged mm -hmm. in doing it. And they weren't talking about that. They were talking about the buzz and the excitement mm -hmm. and things. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's really interesting. Um, yeah. Really, yeah. really interesting. Yeah. And it, it was enough to kind of make me want to keep, keep going. Didn't have a plan. Yeah. Um, no one from my no one from mm -hmm. my family had been to university. And I think that, you know, coming from a police family, I've always thought that was one of the great elements of yeah. Yeah. the police family was, you know, it brought people through. And, um, and that's kind of what I did. So, so you, you did, did your first degree, what, yeah. what next? Um, then I went and did a master's at LSE. Yeah. Um, and that was where it really started to, yeah. to develop. So I had, um, we had, various courses and yeah. things going on there. But what we had at, at LSE was um, an opportunity to do a sort of a project, a mm -hmm. dissertation on it. And I was being supervised by Robert Reiner at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And um, he was, well, what are you going to do? So I went home and talked to my dad, well, mm -hmm. you know what? And he said, he was working on the murder squad yeah. at the time. Uh, and he said, well, why don't you come and see what we do? So I went back to Robert yeah. Reiner and said, um, well, I could go and do something on murder. And he sort of said, really? Because mm. at that, mm. no, one had, no. no one had ever got into that yeah. kind of world. Mm -hmm. And um, so he said, well, if you think you can do it, go on then. Yeah. Um, I did it. And at that point, I came out. And when he saw that I, I had actually been able to get yeah. in there yeah. and carry myself off OK mm -hmm. and talk to people and navigate the world, um, but he said, well, if you can do this again, you ought to do a PhD. Brilliant. And yeah. So I did. Yeah. Um, so what was the masters? What, uh, what did that focus on? That was it. Was a general sort of criminology yeah, right, yeah. Um, course, yeah. and and then for for the PhD, that was kind of explicitly on police yeah. murder squads because right. nothing, yeah, yeah, nothing had ever been done on this. And what, what years are we talking about here? Uh, well, I got my PhD in '99, yeah. so '96 I must have yeah, yeah. started. And there was a mm -hmm. lot going on. Oh yes, yeah. Um, uh, uh, at that time, so it's quite a hot subject. Mm -hmm. But again, going back to uh, you know that part again was a, a turning point, a really yeah. important learning period for me because I was kind of hey I'm doing something no one else has done, yeah. and I remember at, at the LSE at the time we had um, Paul Rock, David yeah. Downs, Robert yeah. Reiner, Stan Cohen. They were the mm -hmm. four key, who are huge names yes. in criminology. Yeah, absolutely, um, and I was a bit full of myself. But in the first three weeks of starting the PhD, um, what they what they did to, to the students was, all the new students coming in, is they made you stand up and present in front of them and in front, in front of all your peers yeah. um, on what your research is going to be about. Mm -hmm. And there was I think, I'm doing something no one else has done. I am, mm. yeah. I am on this. Walk in to do my seminar, and they took me apart. Yeah. They yeah. Abs not in a nasty yeah. way, but mm -hmm. very methodically, carefully, because they were brilliant. Their, mm -hmm. their learning was... Mm -hmm immense and they just took me apart and I always say to my students mm. when, when, when they're kind of fretting and worrying about their PhD um, that was probably the most ex important experience for me academically yeah, yeah. because I thought I'm never gonna let that happen again yeah yeah I, I don't I've never had that. <laughs> never in the same way has anyone ever do, do you, would, would, would you with your students apply the, the, the same approach that they did yeah I, yeah. I, I think 
I think I do, because what they taught me, um, they, they were excellent at it, was the importance of clarity in thinking. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that's really important. Work out what is your argument. You don't need to dress it up in lots of mm. complex language and things like that, but actually what is the mm. clarity of your argument and your thinking. Yeah. Um, make sure you've got that sorted. Um, and everything else kind of builds around that. And to be rigorous mm -hmm. in, 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 in what you're doing. There's different ways of being rigorous, but yeah, that, yeah. that I think for, for academics today is, is, is really important. Yeah, absolutely. So what, what is it that gets you up in the morning? What inspires you? Um, I, I think, so two things I like. One is I like working with good people yeah. who are really mm -hmm. committed and really good at what they do. They don't have to be um, the nicest people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if they're good at what they do, yeah. that really gets me. And then the other thing I guess is, is important to me is um, I like problems. Mm -hmm. I, I've been very fortunate throughout my career to just, without having any particular sort of a plan or notion of where I was going, but to kind of just stumble across really gritty kind of problems. Um, and that's kind of why I like working with the police yeah. a lot actually is the, the, the real world problems and actually I mean you must see this mm -hmm. which is a lot of the time it's not that there is a right or a wrong answer mm -hmm. these are complex difficult things yeah. but you've yeah. still got to do something yeah. about them yeah. um, so I spend a lot of my time thinking about whatever the problem is that I'm interested in at this point in time mm -hmm. and mulling that trying to turn it over see it from different yeah. kind of yeah. perspectives and, and trying to continually ask well how does that work and why are we doing things like this rather than yeah. some other way yeah. and, and I'm quite happy mm. uh, simple self I'm quite happy if I'm if I'm in that kind of um, position really you, you mentioned someone that inspired you early on uh, Mr Lancaster is, is there anyone else out there that inspires you and, and um, I think dad's had a, cap, uh, a couple of mentions as yeah. well there to, to to do what you do and um, I suppose has set you on the path that you were on well it's it's certainly um, I've been as I say I've been really fortunate to, to mm. work with some great Kind of people, both in sort of the police. Yeah. I, I think actually some of the smartest, most mm -hmm. capable people I've come across have been police officers, mm -hmm. actually. But also some really great academics. I mean, the, the people who were at LSE when I was doing yeah. my PhD, yeah. it was a remarkable yeah. kind of coalition of people. I then went to work at Surrey um, under uh, the mentorship of Nigel Fielding, mm -hmm. who was really great as, yeah. as, as well. And then, and then since then, actually, I've been really fortunate in the team of people, the close team of people I've got around yeah, me, yeah. they're great researchers. Um, and um, I think, you know, that's part of what I've enjoyed is when I came up, there was um, a model almost of the sole academic, mm. you know, that mm. you go off and do your thing. Yeah. That, that's kind of changed and actually we need to work in teams now. And, and the people I've worked with here, um, with, in your organisation and, yeah. and in Cardiff yeah. University, I've got some really great colleagues and some mm -hmm. really great mm -hmm. people, and that just makes it more fun and more enjoyable to, to do yeah. this kind of thing. You, you've hinted that it hasn't always been a linear path and, and one straight into academia. Yeah. I'm just, just thinking of um, barriers that you've faced, challenges that you've faced during your lifetime, and what you've learned from, that, from those. Almost all of the big pieces of research that I've been involved in, from the murder risk murder investigations through to neighbourhood policing to the stuff we're doing on counter-terrorism at the moment, um, we've always got pushback. Mm -hmm. Always yeah. got pushback. Yeah. Resistance, you don't know what you're talking about, you're, yeah. you're wrong. Yeah. Um, and I think where we, when we're really good as researchers, we're kind of two to three years ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. And we're just spotting things that are starting to come through. Um, so one of the things I've, I've learned is um, just because you've got resistance at the moment doesn't mm. mean that you're wrong. And if you think you're right and your evidence is good um, and you're sure of your evidence, stick to it because you probably are yeah. right and things will move uh, uh, around. And actually having a degree of confidence about, about that, that if, if you've done good research, if you've been rigorous, you've been independent, you haven't been swayed by other people's agendas, um, stick to it. Mm. because you're probably so right. That, that probably feeds into the next question about the, the aims of, of the institute that, yeah. that you had and would you like to say a little bit about those? 
Um, yeah, I mean, so we've we've kind of been been working with the Police Science Institute now for for a number of years, and we're now uh, introducing a larger thing around that called the Crime and Security Research Institute. The purpose of which is to try and broaden the reach of of, of the work that we do here. Um, I think we we all know that crime and security issues in today that's a global challenge. Mm -hmm. Challenge. It's not going away. Um, we need new approaches, yeah. and one of the ways that we're going to get new approaches is by kind of being genuinely interdisciplinary and genuinely collaborative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so what we're trying to do here is there is there is a kind of a model of science really, which says you do your basic science, you work it all out, and then you try and apply it in the real world. What we're trying to do with the Crime and Security Institute is change that around and say. Yeah. We we'll start with the real world. We we'll do lots and lots of applied research, and from that we can distill out the fundamentals and, and mm -hmm. the kind of the key principles of yeah, it, and, yeah. and kind of reverse that that model. So, so that's what we're trying mm -hmm. to do. Um, I've worked for the past five years um, with some some colleagues who are from very different backgrounds and disciplines than myself, and it's been fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a great way to work, and we're, we're just trying to enable that so that so that other people can do that. And working together, we can kind of really get to grips with some of the challenges that are out there. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned some some names that certainly resonated with with me, and, and, and um, you're amongst them now. Uh, you, you, you're world renowned. Mm -hmm. How did you get yourself to that position? I've just been lucky that I think you know I, I've just kind of come across some really interesting problems mm -hmm. at the right time. Um, I've I've always tried to think well. I'm going to work on these in a concerted fashion. So, if I if I decide that I want to work on something, then I'm going to be with it for a time, and I'm going to really take it apart and and understand it. And I think that's really important in today's world because there's lots of people who can do quick responses and mm -hmm. quick answers. But if you can find out this is a core problem, actually, that's not. It may manifest or present in a particular way at yeah. a particular time, but actually, if we're really going to, and you take it apart mm -hmm. kind of methodically mm -hmm. and understand mm -hmm. it and then put it back together, I think that's a really, really important thing about what, what I've been able to, mm -hmm. ach to achieve. And then I think the other, the other element of it is um, protecting your independence and, yeah. and rigor yeah. and not being swayed mm -hmm. by political agendas or currents mm -hmm. of thought that are out there that if you and, and you stick to it um, and I think certainly working with South Wales mm -hmm. Police and, and, and with your organization and other organizations that's quite in, important because you know what what I've always said to my team and how, how we try and do this stuff if we think something's wrong we say it's wrong but if we think something's good and it's going well we'll say it's good yeah. so people can kind of have a degree of confidence Behind us, mm. that you know, if if you come and work with us, you know, if we say you're doing well, then you probably really are. But equally, if we're something needs looking at, we're not mm. doing it to score cheap points or to build our own press profile or get attention on ourselves. It's because we think yeah. you know there's something yeah. here that need, could be done better. Yeah. I'd, I'd like you to look back on, um, on on that August career now and think about sort of. Key bits of learning. A um, couple of things, really. Key bits of learning uh, and, and a career highlight. Always do something to the best of you, mm -hmm. your, your your ability. There are lots of distractions. Highlights. Oh, I've had I've I've, I've had a number. Mm. I'm hoping I haven't sort of hit the <laughs> highlight yet, and that's still to come. And yeah. that's one of the things yeah. that keeps me keeps me kind of going. I'm, I'm aware. I, I'm just. I'm really happy when I've got a, a problem, a really gritty, difficult problem. To do that, and there are just moments when you, you mm. you're working on these kind of things where you suddenly get that insight, where you kind of think, "Oh yeah, that's how it works," or "That's what this is about." I that's what really yeah. keeps me interested in my career is those kind of working towards those moments where you think, I now understand something I didn't understand before, mm. and, and and that's really satisfying. Uh, that leads me nicely into um, my final question. That's um, what about the future? I'm just keen that we keep finding interesting things to mm. work on. Um, I think for the immediate future for us, we've had a, a, a work stream going now for, for a few years around counter-terrorism and stuff like that. Yeah. There's some really interesting kind of things, developments happening mm. in that mm. kind of area. So I'm kind of thinking I'd probably like to work on that for the next five years. Um, because it goes back to almost where we started in this interview, mm -hmm. which is um, 
one of the fascinating things about policing and whether it's counter-terrorism or whether it's kind of neighbourhood policing mm -hmm. um, is actually some of the stuff that you folks have to deal with is really difficult mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day yeah. basis and it's not that there's a right answer um, you know you're not always going to get it right and, and sometimes is all that we can hope to do is we can help produce an evidence base um, and a degree of understanding and insight that means perhaps things aren't as bad as they could have been if you didn't have that available. So, so yeah. that's kind of what, yeah. what I'm hoping for. for the I'd like to finish on a, on a, on a personal question. You, you, you mentioned that you, you like rugby. You're an Englishman by birth, yep. uh, Welshman by choice. Yep. I'm just wondering what it felt like for, for England to be knocked out of the World Cup during the, the recent events. I've got um, one of my, my older son yeah. is a rugby fanatic, yeah. um, and he plays for the Vale yeah. of Glamorgan. And I've always asked him, would you play for Wales or England? And he also always says Wales. So um, <laughs> that's who his heroes are. That's yeah, who. Yeah. And I kind of think, well, actually, you know what? That's, that's probably as, as Be good an answer as you could get. Best of both worlds. You yeah, can support yeah. both. Yeah. Martin, thank you very that's much. That's great. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Sure. Thank you.